uh, this uh, first discussion. Um, we want to thank uh, James Sai, Professor in Civil and Environmental Engineering. Uh, we'll talk on smart vehicle data collection and spatial temporal analysis with machine learning for green, energy efficient, cost effective, and safe logistics. Um, Dr. Sai is uh, one of the nation's leaders and perhaps world leader in the, the uh, space of transportation safety and the use of IoT and uh, machine learning to support that. And it's good to see um, now expansion into using these tools and capabilities in the green energy efficient space. Um, so with that, um, Professor Sai. Okay, thank you very much, team. Um, so uh, thank you that uh, inviting me to give a talk here. Um, so this, this is a presentation I'm going to talk about the First, I'll talk about the methodology that Tim just mentioned about. And then uh, with that, I'm going to today going to focus on two portions there, specifically is the energy uh, emission efficiency, tracking, prediction, and optimization, which is probably the key part that we are working on. And then also the second part there is the roadway safety. So that's the content I'm going to talk about. And later on, sir, I will talk about the detail. So this slide here, I think is showing the whole big picture in terms of the methodology for green energy efficient, cost effective and safe logistics. So basically in the network, you can see there are different segments. Um, so there's an attribute with that. And if on the left hand side, you can see the network link attributes there's a travel distance, it's link there. And then there's a travel speed and then traffic condition and all of those there. So traditionally on the right-hand side in the model, I'll put a lot of people using this one here, especially the ISYE, uh, a lot of people using optimization, shortest path and then shortest travel time and all of those there. Right? So now the, the one specific I'm gonna present is a green color because other than that, what's the whole industry moving towards um, is, is in the logistics kind of moving toward to kind of more green logistics and safe logistics. So I kind of try to introduce our expertise is more on the left hand side there. So in each segment, do I have quantitative information about energy efficiency? And then the other one there, can I have an assessment about a ROI safety uh, risk? what kind of safety condition there. So by combining all of those there, then the, the model output itself, it could be an optimal energy emission efficiency path. So for the, uh, we are currently working with automobile industry uh, quite intensely to analyze their real-time uh, data. And then, so that's what I'm going to share with you what we are doing now, because we have almost weekly meeting in terms of sending the smart data collection devices to the uh, to the Brazil and then uh, Chile and and for them to collect the automobile company to collect the data there. So we're doing analysis of how to how do we the predict and optimize energy efficiency. So those are the one I'm going to share with you. The other part there, um, the safety safer road. I think this is the one as Tim mentioned. I've been down that a lot. Uh, in the whole nation there. And then my dream is I try to uh, putting uh, this technology here globally, hopefully can cut down the fatality. If every people know that uh, currently, uh, every year globally, the fatality number is 1.35 million people. So basically 1.35 million people die every year. It's not quite normal, but I think it seems like that's the number there every people accept. Uh, so our, our, our dream is, yeah, can we, using technology, cut down that specific part. In the interest of time, I think I kind of going to focus more on the energy. The one we're working with the uh, automobile company first, and then I will talk about the safety part. Um, so, so the part one there is energy emission. Um, so what we are currently working on is to develop technology, stuff on data collection for tracking prediction and optimization. Because a lot of time, how much you improve, you didn't know until you tracking what you have done. And you apply different optimization method. How did you know you've been improved? If you do not have tracking, it's really difficult to know what's improved. 
So we, at this point in time, we work with trucking with the automobile company. We focus on the truck and buses first. At this point in time, that's what we are analyzing. So kind of just to give you some statistical background in terms of energy and efficiency. So as you can see, the, the, in terms of carbon dioxide and uh, is created by burning uh, one gallon of fuel. So as you can see, uh, it's even generate a lot more the kilogram in terms of CO2 by just one gallon of gasoline. And if you're talking about diesel or truck, even much higher. So uh, all of those there that uh, just kind of give you an idea also, transportation sector almost contributed almost 27% of the total U.S. greenhouse gas emission. And that's kind of the current purpose here, try to cut down that one there. And then in terms of energy statistic, as you can see, based on that statistic now, if you want to answer how many trucks in the U.S. per year, how many gallon of oil and equivalent how much of CO2 generated, this is 2020 value, 38 billion gallon of oil. And then if you kind of just using simple math, they're equal to 386 billion tons of CO2 generated in just 2020. And at that point in time, maybe COVID and then now is going to be even higher at this point in time. So overall, I think people talking about net zero, try to cut down uh, and also the energy saving this slide here, specific, I think I'm kind of focused on logistic or trucking industry or buses, et cetera. That's today's talk. And that's what we are uh, working on at this point in time with automobile industry. So this figure here is kind of share with you that kind of more holistic view and comprehensive solution in terms of the safe energy and reduce emission for uh, EV uh, as well as a fuel consumption vehicle. As you can see that, although the EV is start created on the left-hand side there, the electronic vehicle, but the still heavy transportation is still heavily rely on either the diesel or the fuel cell and the other energy type. So you can see that that's kind of, if we wanted to address the issue there in terms of energy or in terms of the emission, we probably need to look at the whole picture there. It's not necessarily say, well, we wait for uh, several years, 10 years or whatever, the EV come and then maybe everything would be resolved. But probably from now until then, we need to look at from different sector too. How do we not only transfer to the, the EV there and there are a lot of work on the infrastructure, how to set it up, but also even the current vehicle with the diesel, et cetera, how did you cut down their fuel consumption? How did, you, how did you reduce the emission? So by looking at the holistic view, then there is a chance to kind of cut down the fuel consumption. This is the one that I kind of share with you. This is our current work. And this is the presentation I'm going to share with you that uh, for us, I think I kind of start with the smart data collection. This is the one that we use earlier. We already worked with the uh, the federal agency as well as state agency putting in as well as logistic company that uh, to develop this smart data collection already. And then we are kind of using this one here for energy and then emission sector. This is the first time using in uh, with automobile industry. So the first one here is going to talk about a smart data collection. The whole picture there is how do we optimize? Because I think for well, the current one, we are working with the automobile Company, their goal, one of us achieve is they set up a global target, try to cut down 6% of their fuel consumption for their customer. So how can we analyze their data to do the prediction as well as the optimization, either through the machine learning or what kind of mean there to achieve their goal uh, for the global, their, their, their strategy. Um, so the first one here is smart data collection. I'm going to talk about that. The second one there, is a segment-based data analytics for spatial temporal analysis. Uh, later on, I think I will mention it to you in terms of that. The, the third one there is a real-world energy efficient, the efficiency map generation. So you can look at those there now, how about in the future, and then you can see each segment there, this one mile, how much fuel consumption is gonna be, right? 
So in a way, optimization, people can easily say, oh yeah, from this 100 mile, how do I have the route with minimal fuel consumption, right? But you've got to, if you lay out that framework, how did you know each segment there, how much fuel consumption is going to be? So that's kind of framework we're thinking about trying to create that. As mayor of Bay, I think Google, they kind of provide some of those there. 20, uh, 21, I think they started with the whole lab in the fuel consumption too. Um, but I think at this point in time, they focus on sedan, they have some plan, they are trying to move to the trucking. So what we are doing there is almost kind of a little bit to kind of similar or ahead of the what Google is doing now. So predictive energy efficiency, that's the other one there. How do you predict? And ultimately, I think very simple is we try to achieve the optimization of energy um, consumption because that's what's their goal. They try to cut down the energy consumption. So some of those there already exist, but I think green color is the one right now we introduce or bring it in, which is through the vehicle technology, the roadway safety assessment and energy, the uh, emission efficiency. This is the one I kind of showed it to you. This is our technology. This is the one we shoot into the Brazil and doing the data collection. So, uh, so on the left hand side, you can see that that's Canvas as well as Georgia Tech's the smartphone. We setting it up. So they are collecting, they're putting in their buses. So that way I can track what's the performance. Uh, and then I can do the analysis, forecasting, and as well as the optimization. So I, we kind of started putting the technology in terms of the um, be able to monitoring and tracking. So that way we can have a data to do the development. So on the right hand side, this is the one uh, later I will touch on the rolling resistance or payment, the uh, uh, condition, specific rolling resistance that contribute to 13% of fuel consumption. So how do we know the rolling condition? So this is the one um, the, we have done a lot on the rollway too, because we are good at that. As a matter of fact, currently I'm a national I'm a PI for the national US national technical standard. I'm the person writing the whole national standard on the 3D technology for 50 states. How they're using the new laser technology as well as machine learning to do the roadway assessment. So we finished that 2021 published as an actual national standard for 50 states to follow. Currently, we have another project close to finish uh, another six technical standard. So that was that was going to be using in the U.S. So um, so my group at Georgia Tech, we are the leader nationally worldwide. I was just invited in May to Italy to give a talk, as well as French, the French um, National Lab, uh, because they wanted to adapt 3D technology for their infrastructure condition assessment. So I was also give a talk on that. Uh, so this is the one. Also, I think we are quite well known nationally, internationally. So this is the one that I think we started in 2017, already setting up some of the fuel consumption. This is our sensing vehicle. So this is the one that at that point in time, we're using the ODB2. So in a way that you can have all the fuel consumption information just for undergraduate student to do the testing, the roadway condition, and your fuel consumption, all of this, how do we correlate together? So. This is the one that uh, we're putting, very simple actually. This is the smartphone application. In fact, we don't need to ship the smartphone. Do you want to take the picture of that? In the they can use this one here for their vehicle. They can monitor the condition. So we kind of make that very simple. We also using this one here to do the safety, roadway safety uh, condition assessment. So in the, the ultimate intent is try to put in this one here, cloud sourcing. So you have a million people use this assess the oral condition, you can feedback. So that's another technology, which is five years ago, I started developing is, can I using the low cost technology so I can have a broader, broader impact? So that's what at this point in time now. Um, so this is the one that the data collected for our analysis, certainly energy consumption, vehicle speed, and then also engine speed, RPM, and then torque. They have a detailed data gear position and the gear so well. How do they home? I think I will touch on some of those attitude, roadway condition, traffic signalization, and also vehicle kinetics measurement, roadway condition. 
this is the data that uh, currently, um, so some of those there that I cannot talk about too much detail because of some of those there, we just work with the automobile industry. Some of those, uh, if that's not too sensitive, I will not talk about uh, in, in, in depth. But some of those, at least I can share with you some of the basic information what we are doing. So they have a lot of different vehicles. They have buses, et cetera. So this is in Brazil. So they are installing, we shipped our application to them. So they install on their vehicle and with CAN bus, they collect the data. So on the, on the, on the uh, this is just one of the segment they collect. And then, so they collect the, the, the roadway there. So have a detail, very detailed information, all the vehicle connects. And uh, so that way we can analyze that. Um, and on the right-hand side, just take a look. Those are the one that you kind of go through the urban area as well as the rural area. So those are the one, what they have. So we can have the analysis can be conducted. So this is the team they have to kind of working with us, collect the data. So this is the one, the second component, not only the data collection there, why a quite important uh, component is data analytics. I cannot emphasize how important this one here because a lot of people are talking about they have machine learning, machine learning. Actually, how many call there? Probably not, there are a lot of package available. Maybe a couple of pages of code for machine learning, that's it. It's not a big deal. But the biggest thing is what? It's data analytics. How did you prepare data in a meaningful way? And the data is correct. That's very important. Otherwise, the whole thing here is, uh, this is the one first thing here, we view fair amount of the uh, study. There are a lot of machine learning model, the fuel consumption forecasting, but most of them, they are time-based. What they mean, they basically have a different input and output is fuel consumption, right? They just based on second. And there's a fair amount of challenge in there. It's quite difficult to integrate to another available data set because if you have a different data set, it's, it's there's no way you just second by second your interval segmentation. And this is another data there. How did you integrate them to analyze? And now you're driving second day, the same route, 100 miles. How did you analyze that? But this is the one most up-to-date technology, up-to-date publication. There's a fair amount of publication. They are all based on this one here. But for us, we need to work with our automobile industry to come up with something meaningful. Therefore, I think we come up with uh, basically segmentation-based data analytics for spatial temporal analysis. So since I worked 10 years in GIS Center <laughs> before I joined the faculty, so I like spatial, like a map, Google map. So basically, since the route, the bus, et cetera, they are going to drive one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, right? In this 100 kilo, I mean, one, this 100 meter, 0 0.1 kilometer, um, you, if you have a constant anchor point that day one, day two, day three, maybe different driver, different weight on the segment, different weather condition, then I have tons of variable accumulate and I can integrate all of this right here. I can grow. So I want to design a structure to support my data analytics and they can grow. They can assess the performance feedback, et cetera. So this is the basic one there, which is the linear reference system there. I think we even putting together in the process, try to find a pattern as there are some of the process there. But uh, we kind of using the anchor point for data consolidation. Certainly, how did you aggregate the data or, or segment the data? Those are also quite important too. So all of those there, it's just very simple to make that scalable, to be able to support and perform spatial temporal analysis and summarize the, the roadway and the vehicle information. So there's different type of information, they all can be integrated together. For example, traffic condition in this 100 meter or 0.1 mile, and then specific condition there, you can incorporate them. And that variable there change because different day, different weather condition, how about during the winter time, et cetera. And the weight is changed. So in a way that you can grow in very quickly your model, your analysis, and you can track. Because ultimately, I think we were told is to optimize their energy efficiency. So I need a sufficient model, a sufficient variable to come up and to analyze so I can optimize their efficiency. I need to know where is the factor impacting their fuel consumption or emissions. And so that way I can, I can optimize those there. 
So anyway, this is the one I will not talk about the detail, but this is the one. So data analytics, there's uh, all the information that we are analyzing that, uh, and then there's a vehicle efficiency and, and all of those there, speed and all the information that we need to analyze. So bring them, this is just show you some of the result, just some of the row way there, just kind of give you a, an idea. So for example, this is actual, this is actual consumption. We ship the application and then collect the data. You can see that the torque, which is a vehicle torque, is so highly, I mean, it's very, it's highly correlated with the fuel consumption. So you can see that those are, this is the one related to RPM. I think maybe people know RPM in your vehicle. So there's a certain correlation, certain pattern, but the torque itself is related to the power, how much power there is kind of directly leading with the energy consumption itself. This is based on actually fuel measurement data. And this is the other one there in terms of the terrain, right? So they have a different terrain there. And since the data itself exists with the terrain, and now this is the fuel consumption, fuel rate itself. So sometimes it go up here, down here, certainly you know those are going to impact the fuel consumption there logically. So those data, they are how they associate with that. So as earlier I mentioned about, if you're setting up a data analytic with a special segmentation, then you know that location here, what's the terrain? I mean, what's the specific profile there? Then you can incorporate that into your analysis. Are you using slope or, or what kind of indicator? This is the other one there, traffic signal. So uh, in a way that uh, through this one here, actually it's the traffic signal in, when you are in an urban area, stop and go, stop and go. That in this, in this point one mile, it definitely is going to be probably require more fuel consumption because, because the, 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 the traffic signal, et cetera. So you need to also incorporate that as part of the, so if I want to develop developer envision every one mile, there is energy consumption, which high, medium, low. Then if I have those back value there, you can envision entire Atlanta. I can all the segment in terms of how much energy efficiency is going to be as output. And people can use that to do their routing, see if they want a point A to point B. What's the, but you need your basic information here. So the basic information such as this. So this is the one earlier we did for the, the logistic company SF Express. And then, so for example, in the case there, they need to know the truck prohibit all the sign, et cetera. So this is the one that we test in, I think near Georgia Tech Center and campus, but I think in the center, we're using the smartphone still. I think we kind of try to using the low cost technology. And then in a way they, they are interesting in red circle sign because those are the one truck prohibit and truck information, related information how we be able to automatically extract those information and turn that into map to support a routing. And at that point in time, they have a 50,000 truck. So we say that, yeah, I think all you need is just putting a smartphone there. You can collect the data every day and then you can update a map, right? So that way there you can, without any additional cost, just leverage your infrastructure already exists, right? So this is what we did at that point in time. So you can create the, uh, like this one here, this is the one they care the most in terms of their routing, especially in the Shenzhen, the big city there continue to grow. Sometimes you say that truck cannot get in, cannot get in at 9 a.m. or a certain time. But they keep changing there, you got to capture there. Otherwise your truck get in and stuck there. It's very difficult to get out. So, um, so they need to more frequently update information to support their logistics as, at that point in time. So this is the technology kind of also incorporate that. This is the one traffic con the, the traffic condition there is also quite important too, as part of the input variable for the prediction. And uh, this is payment condition there. As earlier I mentioned about the button there showing that the rolling resistance contribute to 13% for the truck, the, uh, the energy consumption itself. So this is the one that we sponsored by National Academy of Science, uh, because this is the one earlier in, in uh, we special by rollway condition. So this is a different roadway condition. There's a loss of aggregate and this has become rougher. And um, so traditional is a human to collect the data annually. Uh, but I think we kind of using technology, say, can we using machine learning automatically extract them? 
So this is a project sponsored by National Academy of Science, uh, NCHRP Innovation Deserving Exploratory Analysis. So the idea there is this is kind of like Atlanta, right? So this roadway here is new pavement roadway. So the severity label in terms of loss aggregate, this is zero. There's nothing that's special here. You can see this roadway here, the condition become rougher and then change. Earlier, I think the one we have for the, the, the roadway of the pavement maintenance rehabilitation. But later on, I think with Thai, we say that can be part of input of the energy consumption too. So this is some of those there can be kind of integrated together. This is the one that for the Brazil test, I think we talked to them and they purposely, they changed a different driver. And I'm mean, no, sorry, in this case here, the extra driver to behave differently, to try to see that if they're driving the same route, what happened and how they impact the fuel consumption. So this is the one you can see that almost 39% uh, much higher in terms of energy consumption between the good driver and bad driver. Uh, as a matter of fact, as earlier I mentioned about, this is almost the same driver. They're driving the bus the same route, but uh, the person in the Brazil just purposely asked that person, say, you just behave like uh, not a good driver. Sometimes you suddenly hit a bot, hit a brake or something. And we just wanted to know that yeah, how is the energy consumption, how they impact energy consumption. So anyway, this is the one, we haven't get into a detailed study yet, but just getting the data there, but it's overall, you accumulated the whole thing there. It's uh, kind of have a 39% at uh, higher if you're a bit driver. But I think we were getting to inside there. If we segment that into detail, uh, those impact is in the traffic urban area or certain area and what kind of behavior leading to the additional energy consumption, et cetera. So this is this is also one, as a matter of fact, I just did not intended to be comprehensive because those are just, just ongoing study, just started, they, they kind of getting more and we analyze that, but just kind of give you an idea with a smart data collection sensor. Now there's a lot of thing you can reveal and there are a lot of potential you can get into. So this is the one as early I mentioned about that the vision in the future there is, if I have all those data there, I'll be able to analyze. Can I come up with the energy consumption, energy efficient label for different seconds? Certainly if there's a lot of factor impact that, right? But if roughly, if you can get an idea there, then you can say from the south of Atlanta, certain point in the north of Atlanta, then you can optimize, say that which route there I can cut down the most the energy consumption, if you have those those there. I think this one here is the discussion with that automobile industry uh, people. We constantly, every every week, if we have a meeting, discuss the data and analyze all of those. Basically, they say, yeah, if there's that kind of map, that would kind of provide my customer with tracking for buses uh, information on those there. So anyway, this is the one we're kind of shooting, try to uh, eventually, can we create this kind of map there? To support, and then with with this out with this map here, then the ice ray like a lot of people doing optimization, then they can do in this do optimization. As earlier I mentioned about, it's just the segment you you have additional attributes, which is related to the energy. So, so the the other one there is that this is predictive. I think this is a very preliminary, and then a group of students they are doing the spring, two thousand twenty. At the very beginning that we just trying the, all of this here, as earlier I mentioned about putting the model is here, it's basically no more than one week. So, because a lot of those there, random flowers, all of those already exist. And, and but the biggest effort spent is how did you do the right data analytics, putting the right data itself. So since the spring later on, I kind of shipped the whole thing there, say that, because at the very beginning, I think we review a lot of different article in terms of how do they do the prediction about the energy. But later on, we find out that those are the one are kind of time base is really cannot address the, the issue we want or cannot have a flexibility to look into detail. So therefore, we kind of the design the entire uh, framework using segment based uh, data analytics. Optimization, so what, what are you intended to do? Ultimately, you try to do the optimization. Actually, I think there's a two type of optimization the way I think about. 
But although I think uh, when we work as the automobile industry, it's more like the first one here, vehicle technology optimization. But I think in the ISYE logistic industry, most of the time they probably can also do the second type here, route optimization too, because with the information, what it can do. This is a vehicle technology optimization. So when we work with them, I think in this one here, every people drive, I assume. <laughs> So this is kind of give you an idea in terms of on the left hand side is torque. It's related to power energy. So when you're driving, it's the first gear from V the speed zero, right? You need to stop, right? Start your vehicle. So you're using the first gear. You require a lot of power to find zero to move, right? Then you ship that to the second gear, right? But in certain speed, for example, 30, then you can using when they move to 30, if you're constantly still using first gear, you're going to spend a lot of energy there, although it still can move, but, but it's just too much energy, too much emission is going to be created. So in that location there, you should kind of ship that into second gear, or even get to certain speed, you ship that to third gear, because your speed keep increasing. So in a way that when we work with automobile industry is this is the, the, the vehicle technology, how did you Optimize. And sometimes you're driving up, right? And driving down, there's a different situation there. So how did you optimize your gear shift uh, the, the optimally? So you, you can cut down the fuel consumption. This is kind of from the automobile industry directly be able to impact the, the, um, uh, the fuel consumption itself. So this is one aspect there in terms of this. So the other one there certainly is related to the second one there in terms of the raw optimization of green segment. As early I mentioned about traditionally just travel time, right? And travel speed and then all of those. But now if I introduce the energy efficiency, right? And then even I can cut down based on the vehicle technology, how you suppose to ship change in this one mile or in this second, right? So I can have a different input here, right? Then with that input, certainly the people working on optimization, they can using our output, this one here, to come out with what's the optimal route to minimize the, the uh, fuel consumption. So that's kind of the other way there. You can see that from the network label there. Those are different aspects. One is from vehicle technology. The other one there is from the routing uh, operation perspective to, 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 to work on. And as I kind of talk with team. This is something we were quite interested in, which is, can we select a tracking and logistics company in the Southeast here region here, or to kind of test out the, the, the data collection, the technology itself. Uh, although I think we, we currently working in automobile industry, uh, they are very knowledgeable in terms of what's the vehicle technology side. So we got a chance to get a lot of insight in terms of how to do that efficiently. But I think we want to move uh, forward to impact in the, let's say, Southeast US, US here. And then even maybe the buses here or Mata or, or even the, the logistic trucking company, can we select one and then start kind of operating? And the whole idea there is, can I cut down your fuel consumption, right? That's just, just the outcome itself. What do you expect the outcome for us? Yeah, I think, you try to cut down the fuel consumption for your overall fleet. So that's that's the first part there. Second part here, I will kind of um, cut the show there. Although I think we, we have a quite big uh, study here in terms of railway safety assessment, but if we're using the same technology, as a matter of fact, originally technology smartphone is not designed for energy efficiency or tracking. <laughs> originally it's designed for my safety assessment. I want to work on that. Uh, but they don't, when we work with the automobile com company, it's become a quite good tool to grow in there. So James, why you care about this one here? Well, the, in the US, railway departure, there's 50% of fatality. It's a national kind of high priority. And then uh, so, and a lot of people stem a lot of effort. I think it's still national high priority. And if you look at this video here, you can see that this is on the curve and there's a fair amount of crashes happen. And this is a fatality in the, in the, in the entire US um, in terms of map. And then uh, so you can see that this is the one that vehicle here, 
when the roadway condition change and you're still driving the same speed, then the, I mean, the crashes is guaranteed to happen, right? If you're assuming you're driving a roadway at a rising speed, 35 mile per hour, right? 35 mile per hour, every people drive, right? You're driving along a curve, right? 35 mile per hour. And then today is a raining day. Well, it's really today or, or something later tomorrow, et cetera. Are you going to drive 35 again? Well, maybe you are going to slow down, but if you did not, assuming this is icy weather and there's an ice or something, if you're still driving 35 miles per hour, I think roadway departure is guaranteed. So in a way that roadway friction keep changing, roadway condition there and different weather condition there change. But how did you assess that? How did you feedback to the system there, right? So uh, sometimes if we do not have a technology or technology take a long time to drive to assess that. And sometimes you need to determine what's the right advisory speed to set it up. And do you know the, this is in a minute, I think I shared that with you. So advisory speed in a curve is very difficult to determine. No, it's just basic physics, right? So speed itself, this is a curve you're driving, right? This is E is super elevation, right? Close slope or super elevation, right? It, it depends on also the friction, side friction here, right? And then your radius of that curve radius. So nothing very difficult there. But how did you get the data, right? The friction keep changing, right? So traditionally you say state DOT, what did they do? Maybe I think you guys didn't know. So I kind of introduced this, share with you a little bit. A lot of time I think people are using this, the, it's called BBI, full band indicator, which is a dedicated device and to measure. And this is kind of body force diagram. In a way, this pendulum is moved and while you're driving. And so the BBI indicator is a combination, it, it com, com, combined indicator of friction and then super elevation angle and uh, curve radius and vehicle speed and body roll angle and et cetera. So this is the body, the, the, the body force diagram. And then you can show in that. So in a way, this pendulum is gonna move, right? When you're driving a curve. So typically state DOT, there's two person there driving, right? So this roadway, this curve here, so the one person drive, the other person watch, right? What's the bow band indicator? So and typically sometimes they set up 12, you cannot greater than tell. But I think person drive, they have a feeling there because of side friction or condition change. So when I driving 20 mile per hour, I feel it's still quite comfortable, right? So it's a five mile in increment. So the next time there, I start driving 25 and the people kind of watching and see what that is because sitting next to me. And then I start, mm, it seems okay, but it start a little bit kind of sliding forces. Then the next one here, I increase 35, then it's going to sliding out, quite dangerous. Then I say, okay, this 35 is now okay. Now this one here set up the right speed 25. I mean, I'm sorry, 30 is now okay. So 25 is the one is set. So. It's quite tedious, the current technology on them. So what we are thinking at that point in time is, and then you say BBI, is it, what, what, what is the important BBI? This is historical crashes a year. You can see that this BBI here, this BBI indicate, for example, you're driving a curve, right? And the first curve here, this one here, if you're driving, you see, just kind of show you, this is a historical data. This is real a year crashes data in Georgia from the curve six to eight, you can see that only four crashes along, I mean, in that eight years. So the BBI value change there is about six to eight. So it's 12 to 13. So indicate you do not expect too much change. So BBI sometimes is expecting driving behavior change, right? So it seems like roadway not surprise you, you're driving quite normal. But if you see the other way around, the BBI eight to six, there's 27 crashes. A lot of crashes happen. So you can see that this is nine to 13. They indicate, the bullpen indicator, indicate that movement of pendulum, right? It indicates suddenly it go to the next curve. It's not what you expect. Whatever, whatever happened, this curve here, just not. And then the result, the consequences, is there's a fair amount of crashes. So anyway, I just wanted to know those, the one doesn't exist. I think this is, we are kind of trying to put in also a paper publication too. 
But through those indicators, now what we did is, this is a new indicator, but can we use in smartphone to detect all of those? So can I have a million vehicle, they all be able to extract this BBI and et cetera. That's what we did for the past few years uh, through the project sponsored by National Academy of Science. And now we're testing on several cases there. So this is the one that the dedicated device, all the people, this is one of the commercial product the, uh, one of the the, uh, the corporation, uh, the Riker Incorporation, they are using for all the state DOT. Now we say, can I using smartphone replace that? So we kind of using different smartphone to have one-to-one -one kind of compare to see what they come out with. Did I get the same result? Get the same assessment there so I can move on. Um, so this is the one kind of showed it to you. Once we get the result there, then we can using smartphone to assess the rollway. This, this curve here had a lot of crashes. So now we can assess and you can see this one here in uh, driving, there's a fair amount of crashes. Once that happened, quite fatal crashes because there's a sharp drop. So you can see the BBI value there is, is a, the red color is quite high. So those are a fair amount of association too. So anyway, some of those there, therefore, that we be able to, the whole idea we have is if Georgia DOT, they have a thousand vehicle. If a trucking company have 10,000 vehicle, if I have a smartphone, only you need a smartphone. I can process them and analyze where is the roadway and some of those are condition. And it changes with time, right? As earlier I mentioned about the friction and all of those there, it's changed weather changed. So can I reflect the safety map? So with those safety map, I, uh, our ultimate goal is just to try to cut down that 50% of fatality in the nation, um, as well as impact maybe the globally. So this is the last slide here. Basically what I get back to original, what I talk, what we introduce two things. One is energy efficiency. The other one, roadway safety risk. If I be able to get that information, now, is it possible? Now we move to the next label, not only the shortest path, not only just, just, just the logistic routing there, but we can green energy efficient and cost effective and safe logistics. Because the ultimate goal is, can you combine them? All of them together, you can come out with the most desirable route for your logistic routing. Um, I think with that, I stop here. This is, I would like to acknowledge um, there's a lot of support from the FHWA, the, uh, from the DOT, and then uh, also logistic company, automobile company. So with that, uh, I will be answer any question you may have. So the stop sign, mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting that uh, the you know, when people stop. So th the way I was thinking about it is if we can inform people um, what to do because there's a stop sign coming. You should take your foot off the accelerator. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you envision this being uh, implemented into automated driving, autonomous driving, or how, mm -hmm. how would we go from, from these examples yeah. between uh, what we know the driver should do and what the driver or the vehicle, what we know the vehicle should do and what the vehicle actually does. What are the pathways that you're thinking are most um, available? Yeah. Okay. I think in terms of the sign detection or classification, we did that for almost more than 15 years. Um, originally, I think we started with the sign inventory just from access management point of view. And almost eight years ago, I, I know I stopped by in California. I think one of the trucking company, they're interested in specific stop sign detection. And so I stopped by their company and those trucking logistics company, I think they have a 30,000 fleet. This specific interest is there's a lot of crashes happen because their, their truck is so high. But when you get into subdivision, it's difficult. Sometimes they miss the stop sign and just run through the vehicle or a pedestrian, et cetera. So in a way we developed, but what we did is develop a core technology. But in terms of how to use that, we uh, maybe I think from now on we will think a little bit more because earlier 
we try to say that, can we put in this in the real time? Because in the past, most of the time we do post-processing, right? So like this one here, energy consumption, if you have all the vehicle, for example, if I put in this truck or this vehicle, I can collect those, the route they have, post-processing, getting all the information, then I can correlate with fuel consumption. So I know, which is earlier, the one I mentioned about each segment there, if I want to do energy efficiency label, then I can use this information to create that, 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 that one there. However, more and more the technology become mature because the hot wheel, is it possible in the future there in the smartphone itself that you can real-time stop sign detection? Because I think we are, I have another student a couple of years ago, what he did is using the, uh, basically the smartphone real-time detection, but it may not be that mature in 2019, but does not indicate that it's not in 2022 or 2023. So yeah, I think they have that opportunity in terms of that. Um, so automobile industry definitely is gonna be interesting in this one here. And when yesterday I'm thinking about this and suddenly I'm thinking about, since I'm working with automobile industry already, why not just mention to this guy here say, hey, we have this technology here. Maybe it's driver assistant. If there's a stop sign or something, it will make you aware. Are you interested in incorporating this one here into your vehicle and making your vehicle intelligent? So anyway, that's an excellent question. <laughs> but I think there's a um, different angle there can be putting together. But the one I present is from the point of view is the, it's post-process, but I can use this data here for energy efficiency. But at that point in time with logistic company, it's really the bother uh, because they need the map to update in terms of what's their truck they can get in. Because sometimes they are in the morning, you can get in, in the afternoon cannot, especially in the, in the urban area, um, a lot of time the situation change. But thank you. Thanks, good, good presentation. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's a related question. You've got four objectives, right? You've got distance, you've got time, you've got energy efficiency and safety. So how do you decide, how do you prioritize what to do? If you're a public agency, I assume it's always got to be safe if you're a translation, that has to come first. But if you're a comp company, like you said, 20, 30,000 vehicles, energy efficiency is important. But if you're doing local distributions just in time, time's important. And remember that the mileage affects the wear and tear on the vehicle, which is also cost effective, which is a trade-off potentially against. So I'm wondering how, how can you, uh, Accommodate those different. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, the second part of it is if you've got a real time date, there's a, quite a lot of evidence. I had papers years ago, and there's been a lot of papers since. But when you start out, it gives you what you think is the best route according to whatever characteristic you want, other than distance, which is fixed. Well, oh, I, I, I missed the second question. Could well, you... If, you, if you, when you start out, if you want to use this in real time, and it says road A is the most efficient or the fastest. By the time you're a third of the way down road A or whatever, it isn't anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how, how you can accommodate that kind of, can you accommodate that kind of information? Because, mm -hmm. you know, th there are some papers we put up where we were doing truck movements. And if, if you took the information at the time that you got into the truck, you take road A, but if you'd seen what had happened over the time period, you would have taken right B. I'm wondering how, how can, you know, it affects all your different measurements. Is there some way you can mm. incorporate that? Because you're getting new data. Sure. Yeah. That's terrific. Mm. Okay. So I think there's two questions. I kind of went and so one by one. Uh, if I could kind of repeat the first question there. The first question is probably related to this slide here. Say, yeah, now you have so many different objectives here. How are you going to come out with the? Um, I, I, to me, I think that's an excellent question. Do I have the exactly answer yet? No, I don't think so. Because a lot of time there, for example, related trucking industry, how are I going to optimize? So a lot of those there. Uh, so so what we did is we putting and together in terms of the uh, technology, be able to move to next. But 
in terms of, for example, we do work with the trucking company. What their idea is they want to cut down their fuel consumption for their customer. So we kind of analyze what's the contributing impacting factor. So we kind of get into fundamental science or fundamental stuff. But in terms of after we understand that, how do I aggregate them together to have objective function? For example, I just make that up. Uh, are you going to sacrifice your safety and to the other? Although I think every people say safety, but I think not to say there's a highest um, rank there. Uh, probably not. And the way I see is if I categorize that, I'm going to say that some of those there that if I have very critical safety concern, that definitely maybe I want to reroute or I want to be aware to slow down. So sometimes information there is not necessary. It's an objective function, the multiple objective, you need to have a same weight or something. Sometimes maybe you can sequential or something to process, to formulate your objective function. Because some of those there that you probably say, this route here, this is quite critical. If you really want, assuming I just using a situation, number one, this weather is pretty good. You've got to reroute. Right? Or second is if you go there, that's the shortest route you have. Maybe you need to slow down. Instead of driving 30 miles per hour, you need to 10 miles per hour. So in terms of what the response, what's the informed that driver, there's a different ways. To, to do that, I don't think we, I think through all of those there. In terms of energy, it's the same thing. So those, the one that we try to build is a fundamental one. There. And I know this segment there and all of those there, what, what relative the fuel consumption? What's the safety condition, right? And the route from one to the other, which is already done in, um, uh, in this area for on ISYE, which is how do I combine them I, I think that is a good question there. That's what we try to kind of work as a, the, the trucking industry company. So that way we can exercise what, what's in their mind, what's their priority, and how do we how do we be able to optimize in a way consider the actual situation. In terms of the second question you have, real time, the way I see that is this. Definitely those are all impact. The way in my mind is there's two different labels. Highest label there, for example, if I looking at the this map here, just kind of it, it, it could illustrate the concept itself. So, for example, if I know the roughly different segment based on the terrain, and so I know roughly those are different category. Because if I want to get into very detail, probably I need to rely on real time because traffic, everything here is going to impact the outcome. So logically, if I would like to implement, I'm going to kind of have different category there. So for example, in this route, and then uh, based on the terrain itself, it's not going to change that frequently, et cetera. So, so what would be the fuel consumption label that is going to have in the typical traffic condition? So I have a norm or mean to representing that segment. Then maybe there has people doing the computation, start adding the real-time variability into the second. So then that way there you can mathematically formulate something, be able to practically address. Either you're using just basic norm, which is a mean of the typical performance of this segment there. When you have real-time data, then you're adding another variability above that norm. That's what I'm just preliminary thought there, but those are all excellent questions. No, it's a good answer. I, I think historically we call that if then else. Mm -hmm. if it's not safe, then don't take that route, whatever reason, whatever it costs you. But then it is then considered to then so it's a sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still have to rules that makes it feel time. Still have to if then else. If things change while I'm on road. Then do I bother to change my route or not? Then else, what do I do? True, true. Because even the fuel consumption originally, that when we, when we work in the automobile industry, one of the purpose you try to do is say, from here to Macon, right? I'm driving from Atlanta to Macon, but I'm driving an EV. And I don't want it to kind of find a place I still have a 20 or 30% of my EV energy there, I need to get to charge. I try to get closer as possible. 
So maybe it's better to be just because the EV is quite heavy, right? So, so can I get in closer, maybe just 10% the energy left so I can charge at that time? Because I wanted to make, otherwise every time here I have a 30, I still have a 40% remain. And although it's safe, but I think it's not efficient. And, and then end up that's another issue there, which is the EV and then efficiency. So in that case, I need a prediction because I need to predict where I'm driving that how much energy I still remain. So that way I can determine the surrounding area there. If I drive closer to Macon right before that, where is the location there could potentially have charge station and I can go to which one is the optimal location. As I mentioned to them, I say that in the future, that probably automobile company, if you have a service, you probably suppose to provide a service, have a basic prediction. And then, and that prediction itself is not just based on data. You also need based on your real time data because your, your, sometimes your EV the, and the, the battery get old, right? So you can want to drop quicker. So although you have a historical data, this vehicle here, but I think you are adding also real time, what's your condition? Combine the two, you can do a more accurate prediction. So that way you can provide your customers say, yeah, I think you still have a 5% there. I think, uh, yeah, this is the closest station you can charge. So, and that become a quite important because for us driving gas, I mean, with the uh, fuel consumption, you don't, you, you do not to worry about that because there's so many gas stations, right? And then you can get that. But for the EV, uh, hopefully, I think you're getting more and more charging station. But those are the one is quite important too, yeah. And uh, James, to, 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 the make in the um, situation uh, resonates with me. I, I only have yeah. electric vehicles, and I teach some classes at Robbins Air Force Base in Warner Robbins, oh, and then also in Albany. So I'm always having to think through: Do I stop in the North Macon Station, the Downtown Macon Station, or do I go to Tifton, or do I? go to Albany and then just charge over Tifton, just figuring out the, sure. the different options. True, true. I think that's kind of, hopefully in the future, the charging station increasing, you don't need to using their brand that much <laughs> to figure it out. Um, but I think that kind of going to be all the vehicle, quite basic function, they should be able to predict mm -hmm. a CO fuel consumption. And how accurate that is, another effect, my, an, an, another story probably, yeah. yeah. You know, I have an old Leaf in addition to the Tesla. And the old Leaf, it's much, much, much more challenging. You know, you don't have the pervasiveness of the the Tesla um, network. Plus, with a Tesla, you can use an adapter and use charge point or whatever. Whereas, um, you know, with the Leaf, you're kind of kind of constrained. Yeah, uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, Thank you. Any uh, other questions? Anyone have questions or comments? If not, I um, would like to remind you that um, on November 17th, uh, we'll have our next uh, seminar, and it will be on the logistics of space exploration by Professor Koki Ho of Aerospace Engineering. Um, thank you all for joining us, and a, a warm thank you to Professor Sai for, for sharing with us. Okay, thank you, and uh, nice discussion. <laughs> Thanks.